Okay, so my next slide uh, is let's play with DNA. So we've got this cat on the left. He's not normal. Something's wrong. He can light up our house, I think. Um, he is actually glowing. And what they did was when this cat was just an embryo, actually it may have been when it was just the egg, they added a piece of DNA into there. And that piece of DNA, when that recipe is made, so that gene, when that gene is read, it's going to make proteins that glow, right? So when you shine a UV light, that, that cell will grow. Well, if that cell keeps making more and more recipes of that, so every time it divides it, every cell has that recipe, every cell's gonna glow. So this cat, the entire cat, can glow, okay? This cat over there, he's not glowing. He's green because they're shining a green light to make this other one glow red. So um, this is what we can do with DNA. It's a little strange, um, but it's, it's just sort of this, this uh, visual that we can see things have changed. So let's say we wanted to create an animal that had a specific disease so we can use that as a model to study that disease. We could do that by adding DNA or maybe taking out a piece of DNA or something like that. But what we decided to do is go, well, embryos are a problem, so we need to do something about that. We, we want our cells to be like embryonic stem cells without really coming from embryos. We don't want to destroy any embryos. Um, so what they decided to do uh, was to create an embryonic stem cell-like cell, right? Um, and first they did this in mice. And what they did was they, well, this is a long <laughs> process, but what they did was they took some skin cells. They're not even taking an egg from that mouse. They're just taking skin cells. And they took those skin cells and they added four new recipes. Okay, they added four new genes to those cells. And they said, okay, cells, read, read oxygen. Oct4, Sox2, Cook4, CMIC. We want you to read those, okay? And when they read them, so they, they must have tried this forever and ever. When they finally figured out these four were the ones that made these cells go back to an embryonic stem cell, they were elated. They, I can, can't even imagine. Um, so these, now they're reading this recipe and it says, well, okay, this is our fountain of youth. We'll go backwards in time, essentially, is what happened. Um, so then they were able to grow those. Those are embryonic like stem cells. They, this, in this particular case, they used it to change. Uh, again, they played with the DNA. This was from a mouse with sickle cell anemia. They were able to change that mutation so that it was normal cells and inject them back. So um, do a transplant and then the mouse was healthy. This took a really long time. Um, the really big, 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 big problem with doing this, this, the way that they injected those genes into the cell causes cancer. So this mouse wasn't going to live very long, uh, but it developed cancer. So uh, th this is a drawback. So they're like, okay, we, we were able to convert them back, but now we got to get rid of the risk of cancer. So that's what they are working on now. Oops. And then, not too long after, so they first in mice, they did with humans. They took some human skin cells. They did the same thing. They added those same four recipes, and those cells became like embryonic stem cells. So this one just compares the new way, and this one compares the old way. The new way does not destroy embryos at all, so it's like, it's like the best of both worlds. Adult stem cells, but with the characteristics we want. 